it is hilarious the loophole that is going on right now in college athletics and a lot of these collectives are organized as 501c3s. Exempt from federal income tax is not really for charity. It's to get the bag. It's to get the athletes the bag. They already know, all right? So I'm not snitching or tattletaling, all right? That 501c3 is taking your quarterback away from your school. That 501c3 is grabbing that alignment, taking that alignment, get off the line, come to our line. Stay in college, please. The 501c3 is probably your biggest cash cow. And I love the IRS. I love you guys. Please don't come after me. I am a small podcast host. Let's go, baby. This is another episode of the Athletes and Assets podcast. I'm your host, Noah Lack, and I bring on your favorite athletes to chat about a business topic. You know, usually I bring athletes from the NBA, NFL, MLB, college, Olympians, and they chat about a topic. Today we're going solo because I have another big topic I need to address here. And let me tell you something. I think a lot of athletes, college athletes will not like me after this, but I want to preface it by saying I am pro NIL. I think athletes should get paid. It is hilarious. The loophole that is going on right now in college athletics. And it was not covered that much or according to my sources was not covered that much in the congressional hearing recently where the NCAA, NCAA Congress and a couple of athletes were talking about the future of NIL and what the regulation should be. It is hilarious, the loophole that, uh, that we're seeing right now. Um, but anyways, how did this come about? So I was at a, a Pac-12 basketball game recently here in the Bay. It, is, it was comical how much some of these NCAA basketball players are getting paid and they're not that good. <laughs> they're really not that good. And like, I'm not saying I'm good or I'm better than them. They, they could beat me in one-on-one. -on -one. They are way better players. We'll have way better careers, but my goodness, the amount of money that's being thrown at these basketball players is crazy. Football, they're getting it too, but basketball, according to my sources on average, the players are getting paid more. Um, this right now is the craziest sport, in my opinion, in, in, in NIL question. You know, some guys are getting half a mil, some are getting between half and, and a million, you know, on salary by the collectives, which is crazy to me. Um, but congratulations to them. I'm jealous. You know, I wish I wasn't, I wish I was in college. Now I understand why some of these dudes are 27, still holding on to their seventh year eligibility. Get your paper, brother. Get your paper because you ain't making more money in the G League. You're not, you're probably not making more money overseas as well, at least for four or five years. Seven, uh, a half a million dollar salary, half a million just to go play uh, college basketball is more than a lot of really, really great leagues in Europe pay some of their imports. And let me tell you something, man, stay in college, <laughs> please stay in college. Um, NIL, it's a wild time. It really is. It really is. I mean, holy shit. There is a lot of going on. And the collectives is what fascinate me the most. Who would be pouring in all this money to these athletes who has a sense and a brain? And... We figure it out, we figure it out who is actually behind the collectives. And you've seen it publicly with a couple of, of folks. Uh, and, I, and I think it's becoming more transparent, but it is amazing to see a lot of wealthy boosters who are alums of the school, who are not in tech, they mainly work in industrials or real estate, real estate's a big one, where they feel like this is what it takes to make their program great in this era, or they're getting outbidded in the transfer portal. And so these are like the prototypes. These are the archetypes of the boosters contributing to the collectives. Um, and so very fascinating when you have some of these really wealthy people at large state schools who, you know, live and die by the school, you know, um, and this is the way they're giving back through the collectives and, the collectives um, have been, some of them have been very successful in recruiting talent that would have no business being there if it wasn't for the, the collectives. The collectives is separate from the school. It's basically the collection, uh, the pool of money that the boosters are putting together to be able to recruit the athletes. But here's where it's really, really crazy. 
really, really, where, here's where it gets like really, really interesting. A lot of these collectives are organized as 501c3s. 501c3. What is a 501c3? By technical definition of 501c3 is a United States Corporation Trust Unincorporated Association or other type of organization exempt from federal income tax under Section 501c3 of Title 26 of the United States Code. It is one of the 29 types of of nonprofit organizations in the United States. Nonprofit organization, nonprofit, nonprofit, nonprofit. Hang on to that. Hang on to that non that nonprofit. So a lot of NIA collectives, once again, are 501c3s. One of the 29 types of nonprofit organizations in the United States. Okay. So we got that. This is why I don't like the name of funds and structures because it's like it, it it just there's no context clue if if i didn't if i just said spewed 501c3 you would have no idea what that means i don't have any di- any idea what that means but when you break it when you really look into it it's a simple it's it's simple and so nil collectives that are exempt under section 501c3 carry out this charitable purpose by identifying and facilitating opportunities for student athletes um you know that basically benefit Charities that the 501c3 partners with through increased visibility for particular events or increased fundraising. A lot of these opportunities happen through social media posts, attending fundraising events, autographing items to be sold by the partner charity, often at no cost at the charity. And then the NIL collective pays the student athlete for participating in the charitable promotion. So you have the collective, you have the NIL collective They've structured it and said, we're going to use this for charitable purposes through the student athletes and we're going to compensate the student athletes. Brilliant. Brilliant. Except it's a loophole. (laughs) You are paying college athletes salaries through a charitable fund structure. It's one of the craziest things. I don't know why we're not talking about enough. So here's when I go, here's when I want to go with this. Athletes, you better freaking... Dude, you better get this. This is the I, this might be the most optimal time in history to make money as a college athlete. It may not get any better than this because of how the IRS knows, but also because of how slow the IRS is. And I love the IRS. I love you guys. Please don't come after me. Please, 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 please. I am a small podcast host. The IRS, this is no diss. I'm just pointing out objective facts. Please, IRS, please. I hope the IRS does not come for me here. But if you're a college athlete, there, but there's, there might be no better time in history right now to be a college athlete, 2024, maybe 2025. The IRS concludes many NIL collectives do not qualify as tax exempt under Section 501c3. Duh! Because they operate primarily to benefit the private interests of student athletes rather than a charitable cause calling into question the future tax treatment of a, yes. So, so the IRS knows that the 501c3 is not really for charity. It's to get the bag. It's to get the athletes the bag. And I sound like the code snitch right now. They already know. All right. So I'm not snitching or tattletaling. All right. So please let's get, let's get that narrative out of there. There is no greater time to be a college athlete right now. Get your money before the IRS calls Congress and pulls this into question because once they get rid of the 501c3 for collectives, the donors are going to be taxed more. They're going to be less inclined to chip in more money. Right now, the 501c3 is the craziest thing in NIL's young history. The 501c3 is the craziest thing right now in NIL's history. A collective should not be tax exempt. Um, under the current conclusion and standings. But get your paper, dude. Get your paper. I sound like the old hater right now. I promise you, I'm not. I am not. (laughs) But what's ironic is, like, it wasn't addressed. According to my sources, once again, it wasn't really addressed in the congressional hearings recently. And so you got some room here. You got some room to run a bit. Um, and for you, for the boosters out there, for the athletes, you got some room here. 
you got some room. Because if we've learned anything about American policy, and not listen, I'm not a politician. I don't, I don't even know. I'm not a. I, I don't even know what I am. But like, you got some time, man. Run with it. Please run with it because the 501c3 is probably your biggest cash cow. If you're at a state university who have who has boosters that care about, you know, the athlete. And it's sad because I, there's there's many schools that don't have these big collectives. I wish more mid. I wish there was more schools. I wish D three schools would would uh, chip in a little more on the NIL front, especially because their athletes are, you know, presumably paying tuition if they're not using financial aid. Um, but this is crazy. It, I, this is another topic. Like, it's crazy how. This some schools have just just so much money money pouring in, but that five hundred one c three is taking your quarterback away from your school, putting him in that other school. That five hundred one c three is grabbing that alignment, taking that alignment, get off the line, come to our line. Holy moly, man! Incredible. You got time, man. You got time. That's basically all I want to say. Is you got time. You got time. You don't have time to waste. You got time before the 501c3 gets eliminated. You got time, man. Make the most out of it, brother. Make the most out of it, my brothers and sisters. Please make the most out of it. The clock is ticking to fill the brim of the collectives. Be exempt of paying your athletes for a charitable cause, a noble cause, a noble worthy cause, a noble cause, making them very high paid for minimal performance and the possibility of national championship and glory. <laughs> Um, look, uh, once again, I'm not trying to be a hater, but you know, this 501 C three shit is, is actually crazy. I'm really excited to see how this plays out. Hopefully it, it, it doesn't like, hopefully it's just slow process. And, um, a, man, a lot of these or collectives are know their, know their rights. That's for sure. They know their rights. So I might mess around with my birth certificate, go to the NCA and tell them I still have two more years of eligibility left and I hurt my hand or something. COVID year, hurt my hand or something. I don't know. I'll make something up to go back. I will make something up to go back to college at this point. The way the NIL is being governed, I want to go to college. Take me back on some Billy Madison type stuff. Take me back, please. 501 C3s, man. You got to love it. This was a quick one, another episode of the Athletes and Asses podcast. I'm your host, Noah Lack, and I bring on elite athletes to chat about a business topic. Today, we did a little solo emergency pod. I love these. Let me know if you like them. Uh, we want to make stuff you want. So let me know if you want to hear more about the solo pods or NIL. Please like and subscribe to the pod so you can be part of the community. Let's go. Yeah.